welcome to another episode of Bands Across the Water. Happy Sunday, everyone. Super Bowl Sunday. I didn't even realize there was a game. <laughs> I have no idea who's even in the game, if that means anything. Welcome, everybody. Bands Across the Water. My name is Darren Curtis. I am your host. This show is a show all about original bands, original musicians, and artists from both the United States and Canada, from across the water. Send a shout out to my pal Brandon over there, checking in on Twitch, and of course Barb, and we got Kevin Westmix over there. My mom, of course, tuning in on Facebook, and I've worked on getting the multi-stream chat window up here so you guys can see what's going on across all three platforms. I am streaming live to Facebook on my Facebook page, Darren Curtis Drums. Be sure to like over there. My mic is only on the left-hand side. Must be panned, huh? Well, not sure how to rectify that. <laughs> uh, well, welcome to my world, I guess, huh? Okay, well, my mic's only on the left-hand side. There you go. I'm not sure how I'm looking as we speak to see if there's anything I can do to fix that, but I don't believe there is. I have one in and one out. So, anyway. There we go. Let me see if this does anything. Did that do anything? No. Mike sounds great, but I'm on the wrong. I'm only on one side. <laughs> oh well, I guess it is what it is for tonight. That's how it's gonna go. So I'm on your left side for tonight. Facebook, Darren Curtis Drums. Like my page. YouTube. Head over there. You can like my channel on YouTube as well. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I come on here. And, of course, twitch.tv slash Darren Curtis Drums. You can find me on the left side over there. You'll find me on your left ear. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, proceeding onward here. Hey, lefty. Hi, Ray. <laughs> I have a great show in store tonight anyway, even if I am only on the left-hand side. I have no idea what I did or how I can possibly do anything to fix that. But there it is. Anyway, tonight on the show, uh, as you guys know, this is episode 15, by the way. They seem to be flying by for me. I'm not really sure if uh, any one of you guys seem to be noticing that, but it's gone by really fast. And I'm going to send a shout out to my pal James Todd from Abandoned Souls, who is episode number one. He took the maiden voyage to walk the plank with me on Bands Across the Water, and it was a fun episode. And I like to think that we've come a long way in technology. I like to think that I've come a long way with getting the show together, but... Just call me Lefty tonight. <laughs> Although, hey, maybe I won't mute the microphone tonight. Maybe maybe that won't happen. Got a new microphone here. I'm hoping it sounds pretty good. I'm going to use my DJ voice. I was going to do that, but there's no point if I'm only on the left-hand side. So, <laughs> All right, let me tell you who's on the show tonight. I'm excited. First of all, let me ask you guys. When I hit... Hold on. Let's, let's do this first. I'm going to tell you who is on the show first of all. I'm excited for that. Let's talk about that first, shall we? <laughs> on Lefty's show tonight, <laughs> we have my buddy Stuart Green from the band Crawl. I'm excited to talk to him. Uh, we're actually going to give it a, sh a, a shot. We're going to see if we can get uh, Tom, the drummer, uh, checking in from Windsor. We're going to see if we can get him uh, as well to join us, but... I'm afraid that the technology gods may, maybe Tom will be on the right-hand side. Maybe Tom will just be on that side. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm excited to have them on the show tonight. Uh, Stu, uh, checking in from Toronto this evening. So uh, we've got lots to talk about. These guys are a great band. They've been around for a long time. So um, I'm looking forward to diving into their music. And, uh, and uh, we'll see, we'll see if, if things persist in a, in a good, put him on the right side. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. So I can't even figure out how to get myself in the center. So there you go. So let me ask you this. I've noticed in some past episodes, I hit this, I have this sound effects and, and it's supposed to, you know, the, the audience hand claps work great. I don't seem to have a problem with this. I have a nice little rim shot. If I actually ever tell a joke, I have a, <laughs> I, d I don't get to too many jokes. But I try. But the one, there's, there's one that just doesn't seem to work for me too often. And, and every time I go back and listen, this, this thing just doesn't seem to work. So you guys tell me if you. All right. Tell me what you heard. Did anyone hear that? <laughs> yes. 
I can't explain it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. We've got a tup over there by Barb over there on Twitch. I'm not sure what that means, but anyway. All right. So uh, let's get back to the show. You guys can tell me what's going on there. Thank you all for hanging out and for uh, for being part of the show with me week after week. I do really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time over here. Uh, you know, I think technology has become part of the, the issue. So you're not hearing that. So yes, not really sure why that is either. Maybe I have to look into that one as well. So. A hi-hat? No, it's not supposed to be a hi-hat. All right. Well, but anyway, thank you guys for being here. Um, it's a lot of fun here, and I always enjoy uh, diving into original music that, that uh, you know, maybe some of us have never heard before. And I love the fact that I bring bands from Canada and the United States, and we, we mix it all together, and we have a, a good time here for at least an hour anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mr. Chris Warner checking it over on Facebook. Thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening over there, why it's not working, but oh well. I still got this. <laughs> that works. I have other ones, too. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, yeah! I should have an air horn. I don't know why I don't have an air horn sound. That's something I should have. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut up now and get into the show here, shall I? You guys are like, yeah, 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 move on, move on. All right, without further ado, I'm going to bring him on camera here with me. My friends, this is Mr. Stuart Green from the band Crawl. Check it out. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Stuart. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you, and welcome to the Great. show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm happy, Us. happy to have you here. <laughs> So you're checking in from Toronto, correct? I am indeed. Yeah, in uh, cold, blustery Toronto. Right. I don't know that it's much better here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you for being on the show. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to, well, we're going to try to get Tom on the show, and I hope it goes well. We're going to, if the technology gods will permit, we're going to try to get him to jump in here for a short Great. spell. But uh, why don't you tell me a little bit, uh, first of all, uh, a little backstory about the band and what you, how long you guys have been together and uh, some of the good stuff uh, about you guys. Yeah. Um, wow. So where to begin? Uh, begins in 1937. <laughs> uh, I mean, it feels sometimes it feels like we've been around that long. Um, I mean, the band has been around probably uh, for in in two phases really i mean we talk about the the current phase and the the pre-current phase uh which was sort of the the glory days if you will so we started in around uh, 1991 um scott and tom scott the bass player and, and tom who you just mentioned the uh our wonderful drummer uh were uh, were jamming in a basement in toronto and um they were trying a couple of things, didn't quite work out, and uh, they put an ad out for a guitar player. Uh, I foolishly answered, uh, ended up jamming with those guys, and uh, and and we more than musically hit it off. We hit it off as individuals, and and that that matters because we all came from very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Tom is very much a straight ahead metal guy. He's you know Slayer, Pantera, uh, you know he's he's really into that kind of sound. Um, and then Scott came from a, a very kind of gothy background. He was really into the cure. Well, still is probably really into the cure. Um, you know, uh, bands like that, um, images in vogue and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, and I, and I came from a, a weird place of, of, uh, I was half prog nerd, uh, really it's super into rush and bands like, uh, you know, Genesis and yes, and all those bands, but I was also into, you know, 35 second hardcore punk song. So, uh, we, we, <laughs> I, we, we all came together in this weird kind of mishmash um, and, and we really hit it off as people. And, and I think that's what really encouraged us to stay together. You know, the music part of it came sort of naturally after that. Um, and, and so she, anyway, so, so I joined shortly after um, probably 91, 92. I know Tom is probably yelling at the, uh, at the monitor telling me what year it is. Um, and <laughs> well, so then we put out camera right now. Is he? Yeah. So, so sucks to be him. So, um, so then we put out the call for a singer and uh, we ended up finding a guy named Steve McFarland, who um, uh, again, came from a very different place. He was very much a classic rock guy. He was into, you know, Hendrix and Joplin. He had previously been in the U2 cover band. So, wow. He had this, yeah, he had this great range. He had this, it, it, this great baritone in him. 
Anyway, so, you know, we're talking now, we're talking sort of early 90s, you know, the, you know, heavy guitar rock was a thing again, you know, it was okay to play, uh, you know, heavy, you know, like the, you know, it was the years Nirvana was coming out and or, or breaking. Um, yeah. And of course, every major label was gobbling up anything that resembled a grunge band. Um, and, and, and we all sort of found common ground in, in this heaviness um, and very groove oriented. So for us, it was heavy, it was groovy and not like peace and love. Love groovy but just had a groove um and then steve brought this real uh, melody to things so you know for for probably um you know about a year we we did some intensive basement jamming in uh, in scott's basement in uh, in toronto uh we we wrote a few songs and we played our first show in the summer of i think it was 92 and tom can correct me um and it, it was in windsor actually it was a, a backyard big backyard party in windsor um and we were all shitting ourselves we were really nervous because it was our first show we had I think seven original songs or maybe six original songs. We definitely covered Hey Joe. We did a we did a kind of grungy slow uh, slow thump cover of of Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix. And I think we might have played the Doctor Vine or the Big F song Doctor Vine at that show. Maybe we didn't, but we definitely played Hey Joe. <laughs> anyway, so so that was sort of the start of it. We had uh, we had these these original songs that we put together, uh, and of those, I I'm. I don't think we play any of the songs that we played at that show anymore, including Hey Joe. Um, but it was really, it was really the formation. It was, and it was the, the first time we played together live, um, and it, it felt great. And so, you know, here were four four guys coming from very different musical backgrounds, um, who you know didn't really know each other. Scott and Tom knew each other from Windsor. They they kind of came from Windsor, but um, you know, I was from Toronto. Steve was from Toronto. And we just we just started jamming, and and very quickly uh, we we started pumping out songs. We were jamming two, sometimes three times a week, doing that thing bands do when they first start, uh, you know, writing writing songs, and uh, just you know, sort of not really caring how they came out, just you know, some anything that worked for everybody. And we always wrote as a band. You know, someone would have an idea, um, but they would bring it into the jam space, and by the time you know Tom was done <laughs> doing his thing to it, uh, it, it it had a whole different uh, a whole different vibe to it. So um that continued for a couple of years and you know in that time we were really fortunate we put out uh, our first uh, our first cd uh, well we put out a couple of demos we put out uh something called excited which was a very our very first demo recorded at scott's house uh we then put out a cassette called norton uh which we affectionately named after uh, one of one of tom's good friends and he was a great friend to the band um and uh so we put that out and then we recorded some more songs and we ended up doing our first full length which was called 300 yards of face um that came out in 1993 and from that uh things really started taking off so we had some we had some great interest from uh, labels from uh, artist reps from publishing from uh, uh management tour management companies um and we started playing uh and and we played probably once a week and and someone once joked uh you know that they're you know you know give us a give us a, a microphone and a light bulb and and, and crawl will be there like we would right. play anywhere anytime um and really really honed our live show um and and just got our flow together so you know that got us into 1993-94 we put out a couple of videos we were really fortunate we got some great support from black walk which is a video production company in toronto uh, they put together a couple of uh, pitches for us. We uh, we made videos for a song called uh, Storm and another song called Dry. Dry really became our, our quote unquote hit. That was the song that uh, got us on, it got us radio play, really got us noticed. So, um, you know, those were, those were great days, uh, you know, and then we started, we just kept recording. We were playing with... You know, we played with, uh, gosh, who did we play? We played with Helmet. We played with uh, Quicksand. We played with a band called Wool, which was uh, half the guys from a band called Scream that Dave Grohl left Nirvana to do, uh, and, and they carried on with this band called Wool, so we played with them. We played with some great local bands. Um, uh, we played with uh, Monster Voodoo Machine, was a, was a great Canadian band. Mm -hmm. uh, we played Our Lady Peace. We played their second ever show in Toronto at Lee's Palace. Awesome. And uh, the, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty fun. So, you know, it was just, we were doing that thing that bands do, right? You're on that trajectory. Um, and then we, we really, by that time, had really fine-tuned our sound uh, to uh, where we were, which was this kind of heavy guitar, melodic rock. Unfortunately, <laughs> when you get into 1995 and we're still playing that, uh, 
the landscape had changed and you know the musical landscape changes quickly sure. and suddenly bands like bare naked ladies tragically hip uh you know um yeah uh, a very cowboy different junkies. sound from canada was coming out at that time v very much so I yeah totally it, it, relate it, as a, in the same time frame and the same same story coming from a guitar oriented you know heavy rock band yeah. into this mid 90s uh turnaround sort of thing yeah, it, it really was. And uh, so, um, you know, the interest in us uh, was was there, but but definitely the industry's attention had sort of turned away from us. My uh, my feeling at the, at the time was always that, you know, I would keep doing that until it was stopped being fun. And it kind of stopped being fun at that point. Um, it felt like, you know, the window had passed, um, you know, bands like uh, I Mother Earth and the Tea Party right. um, and uh, Monster Voodoo Machine, of course. And, and uh, there were a few bands that, that got out uh, and, and got picked up uh, and got major label interest, got some major tours behind them um, that were of sort of the same, you know, kind of guitar heavy band that right. we were. Um, but, you know, that the hair metal thing had sort of uh, had gone. The grunge thing was on the way out. So here we were kind of caught in this no man's land and people never really knew how to categorize if we were metal or just hard rock or whatever. And, you know, like I say, we played with Our Lady Peace, which was weird. So yeah. um, uh, but anyway, you know, it, it just was. So I, I ended up leaving the band in 1995. We had just recorded a demo uh, a year earlier that was uh, music for what would become our second album. I wasn't part of that, but. Uh, so I left 95, the band carried on, uh, Anthony Poto filled in on guitar and, uh, they wrote some new material, uh, put out a second CD, did a couple of cross Canada tours. Um, and then, you know, the band really broke up probably 97, I think was probably the end when, uh, you know, it was just sort of clear that, that things weren't going to work for us. It was a sad time. I mean, you know, I, when I, when I stepped away from the band, uh, you know, I kind of, um, I left it all behind. So, you know, now we're, you know, 2011 or 12, you know, you fast forward about 13 years. Yep. Um, yep. I approached Scott and Tom about uh, jamming. I had, I had been uh, gotten together with some old friends uh, to do a one-off reunion show for, for their band. Uh, decided I wanted to keep playing, thought, you know, should get the crawl thing back together. Tom had moved back to Windsor. So, um, so I was going to ask anyway, you, so Tom actually lived in Toronto then at that time? Those he did. He did. Yeah. We, we were all, we were all in Toronto, which is how we were able to jam, you know, three, four times. Yeah. Logistically, it would be a nightmare otherwise. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, I experienced and, and, it with just London and Windsor logistically was a nightmare. It was so, it became yeah, a thing where so we got to move. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and that, you know, that's sort of where we are now, of course. Um, uh, Tom is back in Windsor, uh, our singer, Mike, who I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Uh, he, he's in Windsor. Um, and, and Scott and I are in Toronto, but so we, we started talking about getting the band back together. Tom wasn't really interested. He, like me, had stopped playing. Um, so Scott and I tried jamming with, with, uh, with different drummers. Um, we, we found a guy named Jeff who was uh, in a band. I think it was wrench. His band was called, um, great guy, great drummer. Um, couldn't find a singer. So it kind of went away. And Tom reaches out and says, hey, guys, you know, if you're still interested in doing the crawl thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. And Scott was in. Uh, we tried finding Steve, who was the original singer. Uh, we, we didn't really have much luck there. He had similarly, he had just stepped away from the industry. Uh, he'd moved uh, out of the city and um, we couldn't really find him. So we put feelers out. Uh, I met a great guy named Chad Valier uh, during all of this, uh, who's a singer for for his band called Valier. Um, and uh, he uh, he was he came out and jammed with us once or twice, but uh, he he had some other things going on, so he he really couldn't commit. But he recommended to us uh, this guy, Michael David Wolf. He says you got to check this guy out. He says listen to his voice, listen to what he's done in the past. Um, you know you'll 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 hear his his band My Mechanics. They were kind of a dream theater -y kind of you know heavy rock band. Gotcha. But Mike's voice, you know, we listened to Mike's voice and sort of thought, wow, you know, he, he's got a, he's got his own thing going on. But if, if we were going to jam and, and play some old songs, um, he could do those too. So we, Mike and I got together, we, we had beers one day in Toronto and, uh, and he and I hit it off quite quickly. Um, and, uh, and very quickly he was in the band. Um, so, you know, 2012, we, we started jamming and, and getting prepared for a show in Windsor, a big reunion show, which was also, um, it was a bit bittersweet because, uh, Tom had decided that, that we should 
do this in memory of his mother, Wendy, who um, during our early days in the 90s was, uh, she was our den mother. Uh, you know, Wendy would do anything for the band and she did. She put up with a lot of shit from us. Oh, there's a smile on her face and, and always to help Tom succeed. And, you know, as went Tom, so went the rest of us. So um, she unfortunately passed away. Uh, we lost her to cancer. So, you know, Tom wanted to put on a fundraiser. Yeah, so um, Tom wanted to put on a fundraiser. I, you know, so in 2013 we played this this show. I I lost my mother around that time, so yeah. you know it was it was all it was all quite bittersweet. But yeah. you know, in terms of the the music, it was pretty clear that we were having a lot of fun. Uh, we were writing new material, um, some of which I think you're going to play a little later on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so here we are, you know, so, so, uh, you know, it's funny, we joke because, you know, Mike is the new guy in the band, but he's actually been in the band longer than the, the old guy was. Uh, cause you know, the first time around it was maybe a, you know, three or four year run. Right. And this time right. we're now, you know, we're about eight years into the reunion. Right. Um, right. so, uh, but it is tricky now, as I said, Tom, uh, and Mike live in Windsor, uh, and Scott and I are here. So we actually jam in London, Ontario. That's where we get together to jam is sort of halfway. Sort of um, middle ground. Yeah. 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 But but, but but Mike is Mike is great. He's he's great to work with. He's uh, he's a good guy. He wouldn't be in the band if he wasn't a good guy. We you know one of the thing about this band and, and I think it's true of any bands the the bands that sort of you know like each other tend to stick around unless you're the Rolling Stones or whoever you don't give a shit. But um, you know it, for us it's really important that we like each other. We we laugh a lot when we jam. Uh, we're always taking the taking the piss out of each other. Um, but but there's a lot of love there and there's a lot of respect uh, everybody has for each other. And so. Um, you know it's great so we've written songs with mike we've put out two eps since uh, we had anticipate the fall which we put out in 2014 i think and then in 2016 we had uh the crockford files um and you know and so we were planning on writing and recording well we've written we've written more songs since then but we we're planning on recording on more of course you know now we're all locked down so no one's doing much of anything um although right. we have managed to put together one isolated video so um so that's where we are now we're we're Which we're you know later, we're in a, right? is that the one that we're yeah playing? yeah uh the isolated version yeah. yeah um which was a lot of fun to make actually but so here we are now you know uh you know Sc scott has two kids he's married with two kids lives in suburban toronto um you know i i've, I've got a, a career job i mean we all have jobs and, and professions um you know and so so music for us is now it's a labor of love uh it's it's we're under no illusions we're going to be megastars uh, ever but um right. but we're going to have fun with it and and we uh, but we, we also take it seriously and um you know it's uh, it's it's what keeps us going what keeps us together is just sort of oh you know hey i came up with this idea or this jam or you know tom comes up with some beats or you know someone comes up with a riff or whatever and then it's you know over to mike to put it all together with with lyrics and we get new material so hopefully soon we'll be recording a, a follow-up uh, to our 2016 ep um but yeah so that that's where we are right now we're, we're in a good place that's great yeah and, and the fact that you know you guys are uh you know friends and, and, you know even in the early days for you guys it sounds like you were all you know, it wasn't necessarily a thing of let's get together for the music. You got together and became friends, and then the music just sort of spawned from that. Um, and even in the new reincarnation of the band, it sort of has taken the same turn, really, where you guys are like, you know, good buddies, and, and the music just kind of is a reflection of that, which is great, you know. Um, you're yeah. absolutely right that that's what it takes for for most bands to survive and thrive in a day in, in today's day and age is, is half the battle is just getting along with everybody, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think I think that's true of any band, you know, and, um, you know, you hear horror stories about, you know, infighting and all kinds of nonsense, uh, you know, notwithstanding when they're, you know, if you get money or girl issues or whatever, uh, that get into the mix, um, you know, we've never really had that, but, um, you know, it's, it's just really important. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, that's well, it was a band in Windsor, I think called no Yoko's, but anyway, um, so we, uh, you know, get, getting along is, is really important. And, and, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, especially bands that are in our position where, you know, we're, uh, you know, in our uh, <clears throat> years old and, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of, we're sort of set in our ways and doing our own thing now. And our priorities may have changed, uh, you know, from where they were when we were 22, um, sure. or 25, I guess, right. but you know, it's, 19. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, too, right. So, yeah. um, anyway, but, but, you know, getting along is, is really important, especially when you're just doing it for fun, because if you, if you're not having fun, 
you know, really what's the point. Right, right. Um, so uh, Ray Solomon from Age of Wolves over there, he was a guest of, I want to say he was like episode five. He was, he was an earlier one. Uh, he says hey, over there on Facebook, hoping to share the stage with you fellas again sometime soon. Nice. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's see, who else did I want to point? Oh, uh, Chris Warner, too. He's actually in London. And uh, MDB Rocks over on Twitch says, yay, London. <laughs> so London <laughs> is in the house checking in. Uh, yeah. And my buddy Chris Warner says his shirt, Billy Van. I like this guy already. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is the count from Hilarious House of Frightenstein. I uh, I'm a huge fan. Billy Van was the man. There's a book a book called uh, the, Who's the Man, Billy Van. Um, it, anyone who knows that show, any you know people of a certain age will remember the show. Uh, wow, what a talent! I met him once right. in a grocery store in uh, in Scarborough, uh, which is just a suburb of Toronto. Yeah, he was grocery shopping, yeah. and I bumped into him in the frozen food aisle, and I s did a double take, and I stopped and chatted with him. And what a lovely guy! He was a, just a really, really nice guy. You know, they said don't meet your idols because they'll turn out to be assholes. Right. But this guy, he was amazing, right. really nice. And then he died a few years later, but. Anyway, yeah, oh, so that's, well, that's uh, good to know, though. At least yeah. he was it was exactly opposite of what you've sort of been told or taught. <laughs> yeah, no, he was great. That's good. So um, I'm kind of thinking that we should play a song, uh, give give everybody a taste of some some crawl. Uh, but on top of that, I'm wondering if maybe I should try to see if we can get Tom in on the conversation during the the musical break here. So, uh, Tom, I'm not sure if you're out there listening, but if you are, I'm gonna try to make an attempt to get you on the show here during this video. So. Wish me luck if the show craps out and we and everything goes to shit. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can and we'll see if we can continue on. But we'll see how that goes. So let's get to a song. Why don't you uh, you tell me about this this song uh, we're gonna play is called Mine. Um, you can tell me a little bit about this and then uh, while we're on the break, we'll see if we can get Tom to join us in the call. <laughs> sure. So mine is uh, mine's off our our latest EP, The Crockford Files, um, and uh, this was recorded uh, in. Uh, we did our parts in in Windsor. Um, our, our friend uh, Maximus Reed, Greg Reed, uh, who's a Windsor-based photographer, videographer, uh, did all of the the shots for us. He he wanted to play with some new toys and do some new things. Um, so we were his guinea pig, so to speak. But we got a we got a video out of it, which was great. great. And he shot the uh, the B roll stuff that he shot with the weird houses and dolls and stuff that's all in detroit so uh nice. there's a, a strong windsor connection windsor michigan's so video across the water kind of thing ah, that's great. Yeah, perfect. so uh yeah so it's uh, it's uh it's it's the last video we did um and uh well at, at, when we were together and right. uh yeah, it's uh, it, like I said, it's off the Crockford Files, and uh, it's uh, I think it's really indicative of our sound. You know, little little fast, little groovy, melodic, but still kind of heavy. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get to it, and then we'll see if we can't get Mr. Tom to join us in the call afterwards. All right. Here we are. This is mine from Crawl. Check it out, you guys. For no good reason 
Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I think we're back. Oh, my goodness. Am I back? Are we back? Goodness gracious. <laughs> I think we're back. We'll see if anyone actually responds. I think we're back. That was the craziest thing. How about you? Can you hear me okay over there? I can. You can. I, I can hear you. Uh, I think we're back. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened. Uh, I tried to get... Yay, there's Barb. Okay, so she's saying we're back. Okay, so Good. listen to this. This is this is just, just goes to show you. I tried to get a call with Tom, so I went over to try to see if I could get it to happen. Uh, it couldn't happen. When I came back to Streamlabs to try to get back into the show, my cursor for my mouse was completely gone. I couldn't, I didn't have a cursor anywhere, so I couldn't click on anything. So I was definitely like hanging in limbo, <laughs> unable to do anything. I ran into Phil's room and I grabbed a wireless mouse thinking that maybe the wireless mouse was having, a uh, wired mouse thinking that the wireless was having issues. That didn't work. So I did the whole, like, I'm on a PC, so I did the whole, like, Control-Alt-Delete thing. And as soon as I did Control-Alt-Delete, my little cursor showed up, and I could go click on whatever I wanted at that point. So I clicked on Cancel, came back to Streamlabs, and sure enough, there it was. <laughs> so, sorry, Tom, I don't think we're going to get you in the show tonight, buddy. <laughs> and as Stuart said, it's Tom's fault. So we're blaming Tom. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. I appreciate your support, buddy. I was, no problem. I always blame Tom for things. <laughs> <laughs> he has it coming. Oh, that's so funny. Anyway, but we made it. We're we're back. We we're we're alive and kicking. And and uh, to reiterate, that was a great song called "Mine" from Crawl. That was the latest video that you guys have done, right? Uh, the latest, yeah. The latest. Uh, I mean, we've we've done. I think you're going to play the. Uh, we've we we jumped on the isolated uh bandwagon and we did one of those too so yeah right well yeah, we'll get to that but that's your sort of your latest we'll, we'll say yeah. official non-quarantine non-isolated video correct <laughs> <laughs> great well sorry to tom i uh, was unable to get to make it work and and uh uh you know as you can see things didn't work out anyway so <laughs> you know i think one of the best things about this show Stuart, is you never know what you're gonna get you know it's like a box of chocolates yep it is. It, see, Tom even agrees that it is his fault. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. He knows his place. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We're blaming Tom. There's Tom over there, the drummer for Crawl, yeah. hanging out on Facebook, and it's his fault. So everybody, go it's way so to go, not, Tom. No, so not my fault. He says. <laughs> no, it's his fault. Whether he's not here, so he can't really technically defend himself. <laughs> right. And Ray's got our back too. Ray's over there saying, "Sure, Tom." <laughs> Ray knows. Well, I think uh, most of my regular viewers will say they're they're all pretty much used to my um, technology <laughs> woes. So snafus. Yeah, they're they're like, yeah, whatever. He'll 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 be back in a minute. <laughs> it happens. It happens. But anyway, so sorry, Tom. Sorry, I couldn't get you in. Was hoping to, but I know you have other priorities going on. Who's playing tonight, anyway? I don't know. It's the 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 football throw guys against the hand egg, whatever. I hope both teams have fun. I hope they have a good yeah. time. <laughs> what the hell, Tom? I'm sure. Right? Like, who does that? You know what his thing was? He was like, oh, uh, my! I forgot my calendar. I forgot it was Super Bowl Sunday. And I'm like, who cares? I mean, who's even playing? I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> The Ottawa Rough Riders against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. <laughs> Three downs. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, good stuff. Well, hey, I'm glad that you were able to join me anyway, Stuart. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate you bearing with the technology woes as well. No problem. My pleasure. <laughs> they are there. That's for sure. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. We talked about uh, mine. Uh, okay. I wanted to ask you a little bit about... Um, like I know that you guys haven't been able to do a whole lot during this whole quarantine, but once and and assuming that things are going to get back to somewhat normal, somewhat of a level of normalcy, let's hope. Um, what are the plans for you guys moving forward? Are you guys going to keep trying to push 
push uh, with recording more stuff and get this next next maybe a full length or something out? Like, what's your kind of next plan with shows and trying to move forward with you know some getting back to some level of normalcy as a band? Yeah, I mean, I you know I think we're you know we're like every band out there that's really itching to play. Um, you know, as I said, we you know we've written some new material that uh, is not yet recorded, um, other than you know a couple of crude uh, live recordings that we did. But uh, so we have a couple of songs in the bag already. Uh, you know, I've been working on some riffs, and guaranteed, I've just said that my my phone's going to go off, and Tom's going to go send me it, send me it, because he always wants to hear what the new shit is. My he's not listening. Is, he, has, send, he has yeah. other things to do tonight. No, he's, he's, he's messaging. He's 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 listening. He knows. <laughs> he's already called me out on a couple of my dates, calling my sketchy date recollection. <laughs> oh, good. All right, we got a fact yeah. checker out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good fact checker. He just doesn't want to do an interview. So, <laughs> to his credit, <laughs> yeah, so though, he did say Stuart would be a way better interview than me. So I was like, all right, well, I just blab on. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, so so uh, you know, I've been writing some. I've been working on some riffs. I've got a couple of crew recordings. Uh, I always do two versions when I write new riffs: uh, one with a drum track and one without a drum track, because apparently our drummer doesn't like when I use drums to play along to. Uh, so I record with drums, and then I cut the I mute the drum track when I send him whatever I I have done. The other guys are fine with me using, uh, you know, the logic drummers because they generally end up being better than Tom anyway. So, um, so, uh, F you, Stu, F you, I can hear him. Yeah, I can hear him in my head. Um, Sorry, anyway, Tom. so, so working on, been here. working, yeah, exactly. If he'd been here, he could have defended himself. Right. Fuck him. Um, so yeah, working on some on some new on some new jams. Um, you know, we uh, the the last uh, the last EP was was my first uh, experimentation with a seven string guitar. So nice. Uh, I uh, so we have a couple songs on the Crockford Files that, uh, that, that have the seven string, and Scott already had a five string. He was he was ahead of the game. He already had that extra string ready to go. Ah. Um, <laughs> so uh, so I've been writing some some riffs in in the uh, the low B. Uh, I may try and play around with that and drop it down to an open whatever it would be an open a or whatever right. um who knows i mean i don't want to go too tool or whatever but yeah. um but so so you know so a lot of the, the the things i'm listening to are influencing me so you know i'm listening to these days a lot of um you know baroness and mastodon uh i caught i think i caught just in your little intro there a little bit of cave in um from the um uh what's that record called uh anyway Great, great album. Uh, the the last thrice album stuff like you know so things like that that are quite melodic and heavy and uh, some modern stuff. So that's kind of where my head's at these days. Um, and uh, I'm sure Mike has a whole bunch of poetry written that's really depressing about being isolated. Although you know he's got a lady in his life, he seems very happy. He seems to be eating well. He's got a lot of food posts. Uh, Scott good. just posted. Scott just posted something about uh, food as well. He's got a new dog, uh, nice. you know. So uh, you know, and and Tom's got a lady in his life. I'm I guess I'm the only bachelor, but whatever. Um, so <laughs> anyway, so I don't I have a cat. He's you do have a cat. Asshole, but I do. Well, good. Um, I'm gonna have you send me a picture. We'll get a picture of your cat into the uh, pets across the water oh, segment on there. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, not, um, not right now. Don't because so, my technology will probably you know. No, I'm just seeing if I have a, <laughs> and I can hold up to the camera. Oh, there we oh, go. Good. What's the name? So that's that's Bugle. Bugle. He's uh. Oh yeah. Siamese. He's a purebred rag doll. No, he's a oh. rag doll. Um, uh. and he's kind of an asshole but he's he's my asshole he hates everyone except me so that's good that's perfect that's perfect yeah um so so we'll get you know we'll get together once once things open up we'll um we'll do uh you know we'll get some live live shows together we were we were trying to work on a um a live show from windsor um from the the backstage in windsor mm. um a, a club that's been incredibly generous to us and hosted us a bunch since we've done the reunion stuff um and but they have a they have great uh, Bryn, who's the sound guy there has this yep. great digital setup so we thought you know we might be able to do a live stream kind of show you know there's a lot of bands doing those right now um of course we can't do anything right now but uh right. you know if we sort of phase back into it we may do a live stream show before uh full shows return which which would be a lot of fun to do just to get back together and jam sure. um yeah. and yeah and then we'll we'll you know we'll get to recording uh you know there's uh there's always a cost of recording so we have to keep in mind that and uh um you know hopefully that can work out but uh yeah so 
Good. Well, good. At least you guys, you know, you're not, you you have a plan to at least do something. You're going to kind of keep pushing forward in whatever sort of capacity yeah. that you guys can, um, you know, based on the fact that you all just kind of love what you do and you love the band and you, and you love kind of you know, the friendship and the, and the relationships that you have with each other. And that's, you know, yeah. all the right I mean, reasons, you know? Yeah. And we're in regular contact, you know, almost every day there's some back and forth. Um, you know, I know Tom has been going through the archives. He, he recently came across some VHS tapes that he's had converted. Uh, he's got them on his computer. So he's been posting some old videos and things, uh, of, you know, of old crawl from, you know, from the nineties. So, great. um, that's a lot of fun too. So, you know, we've, we've got this great history. We've got this stuff to look forward to and yeah it'd be yeah. great if uh and if if and when the time comes you know we can get on a bill with you guys um in you know my hometown is windsor i'd love to play a, a local show uh with elsie banks there you know with, with yeah. uh, some of my my favorite friends and favorite bands uh from the area you know it'd be great i'd love to get a band and souls on that bill and um, yeah. you know some of the other original bands that are still still pushing through all of this you know yeah, um, yeah, no, that that, that sounds well, heavy for sure. That would be great. Yeah. Um. So the first time uh, I ever heard of Crawl, um, I was actually working with a fella by the name of well, uh, you probably know him as Hutch. Everybody kind of knows him as Hutch. <laughs> I do. Tom Hutchinson. I'm not sure if he's I... tuning in tonight, but um, he is one of your diehard fans. I know that he always had nice things to say about you guys, and um, you know, the minute that he found out that I was in a band and a musician and a drummer um he immediately was telling me all about this band crawl and how he how they're awesome and uh this is going back a long time so uh, yeah. that's how i long before i ever heard any of your music or knew tom or any of you guys i heard of you guys through this other friend tom uh through when i was at a different job in windsor at one point working with him yeah hutch hutch is uh i you know there there are i, I mentioned earlier that we we named our our, uh, our second cassette after uh norton yeah. um uh martin martin katari or i got probably screwed up his name but somehow he got a nickname norton um okay. and hutch and then there's another guy pete schofield uh yeah. there was a buddy of his jody and they were always sort of a duo pete and jody um and uh and then there was uh tony uh, fonseca who um uh we uh, sorry I'm, I'm just he he passed away uh about a year or two ago um after an, an awful battle with cancer and uh you know he was in his late 40s or 50 or something but mm. um tony was uh, another one of those guys from that time period who uh stood by this band and um we named our publishing company after Tony. Uh, his nick, his last name is Fonseca. He was Portuguese, but um, I always joked and, and called him Funsucker, just like Fonseca sounded like Funsucker. <laughs> we ended up uh, naming our publishing company Funsucker Music. Nice. Um, and Tony was uh, Tony was our he was our uh, our road manager. He was our roadie. He was uh, he bought a van just so he could you know help sh you know shuttle the band around. Awesome. Uh, absolutely lovely guy. Tom, uh, Hutch um, uh, Norton Pete all these guys um were were fans of the band back in the day and they are still um you know fans of the band and they come out and support us um every time we play uh so uh hutch hutch is hutch has a song we've got a song called grounded which we always dedicate to hutch because nice. the, the the closing of it uh turns into a sort of slayer mosh and he just loses his shit he goes off so um <laughs> Nice. So, so shout out to all those guys. Uh, there are so many people. Um, Tom's sister Christine, uh, his brother Murray, who did a lot of graphic work for us. Um, uh, you know, th there have been. Uh, I have a lot of friends too. Craig and Dina. Hi, Craig and Dina. Um, you know, people that have supported this band from day one, who are uh, who came back with us, and were probably more excited about us getting back together than we were, to be honest. Um, and Fabulous. yeah, it, it's amazing. And, you know, uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, you know, um, you know, bands pay their dues, they play in, you know, little small bars, they play to two or three people. Uh, we did a show in London uh, about five years ago, where we literally played to no one, the bartender went home, the sound guy went home, everyone just left. It was a terrible snowstorm at call the office. But anyway, oh, yeah. so every band has done those shows. Um, but, but, you know, these people are always there. And, you know, our feeling and my feeling is for sure is that, you know, put me in front of a hundred people who don't give a shit or put me in front of three people who are really fucking into it. Um, you know, we played a show in Montreal probably uh, six years ago. Um, and there was one guy uh, who came out and he 
was an old fan of the band. He was, he, he couldn't believe he, you know, we were playing, he couldn't, and he was singing along to the song. Nice. Yeah, there weren't a lot of people in the bar, but we played to that one guy. Right. right? And, and that one guy was so into it. And, you know, Hutch is another one of those guys. So, and, and the other people I mentioned, they're like that, you know, right. we'll play to those, we'll play to those people. And, and they're really, you know, in addition to just loving playing music, uh, you know, the reward for, for bands, I don't know, this is unique to crawl by any means is that, you know, that, that the feedback that you get. And like I say, if it's one person going off uh, or, you know, uh, Give me that any day of the week if Definitely. it's if it's that or some indifferent. Um, we we were we were you know I, I mentioned earlier too about you know um, playing live a lot mm -hmm. and basically we would set up and play anywhere. Um, that actually, in addition to helping us really hone our our, our sound and our skill and, and our live show, um, we we earned a lot of, of, of fans that way. You know, we'd go out and play to fifty people and no idea who we were, but one person would be into it they'd come back and they'd bring a couple friends to the next show. You know what I mean? So that, that kind of builds like that. And it was, we were back in the day, it was very organic for us to do it that way. And, uh, and, and really, you know, those kind of people who, who are champions for the band, who are people who are there for you come hell or high water. I mean, they are, they're, they're, they, you know, they're really, they make it worthwhile. Um, you know, we do it, we do it selfishly. We do it for ourselves because we like doing it. Maybe when you're younger, you have selfish motivations about becoming rich and famous. But certainly at this point in our lives, you know, we're doing it because we enjoy doing it. And if there are people who are along for the ride who are into it as well, that's fantastic. Absolutely. I'm glad I mentioned Tom uh, Hutchinson because he's checked in over there on Facebook. Uh, he says, love you guys, Stu. Uh, so I'm glad I brought him up because I wasn't sure if he was yeah. tuning in or not. But uh, yeah, he uh, was the original person that ever told me about crawl in the first time i'd ever heard of you guys so shout out to my buddy yeah. tom over there hutch uh but you're Hi, absolutely hutch. right Stuart. um you know it takes we wish we had a million more hutches you know where the, each one of them is is as unique as anyone in, in the planet but we, we we don't we don't we could not handle a million hutches at a crawl show i'm telling you right now the place it. would be destroyed i get it but but you know uh it's those people those those special people that that seem to to connect with the bands on a little bit more of a different level than just the average person who goes out to see the band um and it's their dedication and it's and it almost drives us as musicians to you know Absolutely. i want to to push and be better and do better and and give more and and uh, it's people like that 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 absolutely uh, and you know in my case Elsie Binks is is the same thing we have some fans that we know like they they never let us down and we can't you know thank them enough for for it you know so shout out to you Mr. Yeah. Tom good to see you buddy we tried to get the other mm -hmm. Tom on here but Tom Grondon but <laughs> it, it didn't work so well for us so. he just broke the internet that guy <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> when we're blaming him it's all his fault so. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, I love hearing those stories and uh, I love, you know, those, the personal connections that, that happen outside of, you know, uh, uh, the actual like live environment. You know, it's not like I went to, a, to see you guys play with Tom and, and that's how it was like literally, you know, uh, at my nine to five one day and we were talking about bands and being a drummer and next thing, you know, Tom's telling me all about this band crawl, you know? So, and then he trashed the place, just went around and just trashed <laughs> yeah. it. With whirling his arms around, doing a <laughs> yeah, mosh. You got it. And then he threw That's a canoe at me. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we, let's see. We have, uh, we have another video here I'd like to play. Uh, this okay. is not the isolation one yet. We'll get to that one, I okay. think. We'll, make, we'll save that one for the end. Okay. Um, so why don't you tell us about this one? This one is called Rise. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this song and this video and uh, whatever you can tell us about it. And you can tell us about your cat. Um, and you can tell us about <laughs> whatever you want to tell I'll, us about. I'll, I'll spare you. I'll spare you cat story. <laughs> um, uh, so Rise was uh, one of the first songs that uh, that we wrote when we got back together with Mike. Um, I was uh, I was feeling kind of. I don't know. I, I had a bit of a, a writing spurt where I was coming up with some pretty fast riffs. So we had two songs on our EP called Anticipate the Fall. Rise was one, Loaded was the other one. And they were, they're sort of the faster kind of side of crawl. So um, Rise is uh, is, a, is a bit of a toe tapper. It's, it's faster. And um, uh, as I say, one of the first songs that we wrote, and in fact, Anticipate the Fall, the EP is a line from the song Rise. Um, Mike Mike's lyrics for this song are fantastic. It's um, uh, 
you know, it, it, it's a song about despair and hope and, uh, you know, and, and bad times and, and rising up to, to face the good times. Uh, it's uh, uh, lyrically one of my favorite crawl songs. It's, uh, it's really great. So this video, um, I think it's just a live video that we put together. We had some mm -hmm. GoPro footage. Um, we also had a soundboard recording from this show is that the venue in Windsor. Um, and uh, so I, I pieced that together. I did a little overdubbing, um, or oh, sorry, over, uh, put put the uh put the uh, audio on top of the video that we had gotcha. um i did uh in all in all truthfulness just between us i, I did some guitar overdubs too so um <laughs> I, 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 there were some guitar, there were some guitar flubs I wasn't happy about, so I was able to go in and, and uh, do some of that. So, uh, but no, anyway, no but, harm, uh, no so, foul, my friend. Right. So, so this song became uh, a show closer for us um, in the in the the newer iteration of Crawl. Um, we we used to close shows with Dry because it was sort of our best known song, and it was it's it's a great song too. Uh, we actually have videos for Dry and Storm, uh, which there's no point in playing because they're with the old singer, but. Right. You know, so be it. Right, right. Um, but um, so yeah, so this was really just a promotional video uh, to 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 showcase the band. It, we put it together quite quickly, but um, but the song is a it's a real toe tapper. Cool. All right, well check it out, you guys. This one's called Rise from Crawl. Here you go. <laughs>
Boys from Crawl. Great song from those guys. I'm enjoying my conversation with Stuart Green tonight from Crawl. Hope you guys are having fun so far with me. Thanks for hanging out and dealing with a little bit of technology issues, but we made it through. We are there, we are here, and we're still rocking on forward. So let's uh, tell you about what is happening on the show next week. So I'm going to have Lacey and Jason on the show with me next week. I'm looking forward to it. We had a couple of shows with Bourbon House out in, uh, I want to say it was Indianapolis somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Indiana. Uh, and then they came and uh, actually came to see us play sometime at a, at a speakeasy when we were playing out that way. So uh, looking forward to having them on the show. Husband and wife team. Going to be a great show for Valentine's Day. Uh, I think I'm going to even get them to uh, possibly play live for us, too, from their location. So... Uh, she is actually a native of Ontario. She's from Sudbury, Ontario, if I remember right. So we'll get into all that stuff and have a good chit-chat with the two of them and play some of their music, uh, and I'm looking forward to a great show. So please sure to join me next week on Sunday at 7 on Bands Across the Water. In the meantime, let's get back to my guest, shall we? i got Mr. Stuart Green here with me from the band Cross. Thank you for being here, Stuart. It's great to have you on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great. I'm having a good time so far. Lots of good songs. Uh, that song, Rise, was great. Uh, when did you say that? That was a previous release, right? That was something... No, no, that was... Uh, well, I mean, previous in, in the sense of probably five or six years ago. Yeah, yeah. it's been a little bit from <laughs> I mean, that one, right? Compared to your... Yeah, low, that was... Compared to mine. It was... Right. So mine was off the newer EP. Um, Rise is off the Anticipate the Fall EP, which was the first thing that we recorded uh, when we got back together. Right. Great song. Cool. It's got a good energy, good vibe. I dig it. Yeah, it does. Uh, what's up with that venue? Is it? It's not there anymore. Gone. Right? Yeah. No, gone. What was it called again? The venue. Oh, it was called The Venue. Was that right on yeah, Millette Avenue? Uh, it's right downtown. <laughs> <laughs> my, I, I, my, my knowledge of Windsor, again, now I can hear Hutch and Tom are yelling at me. Right. I, uh, I think you know, it was. In Windsor, they... Pre- yeah, I, I, it, Windsor's a weird place. Like when it comes to French words, they just pronounce them weird, right? Like, <laughs> you know, the the backstage is on a street that you know most normal people would pronounce Langlois, uh, not uh, Tom Grandin pronounce it Langlois. Langlois, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what uh, I would say actually. <laughs> right? Yeah. So there you go. So that's a Windsor thing, right? Yeah, talk you about guys a Windsor thing. Up. Don't even get. Don't even go to like Pierre Street. You'll never find it. You'll never find. Oh, it's Pierre. Isn't it Pierre or it's something? Pierre. <laughs> like well they, you guys have pizza and weird french pronunciations in windsor some, I yeah i was just telling somebody about the pizza in windsor actually there's it's, it's actually kind of known for pizza isn't it yeah in toronto someone just opened a windsor style pizza place yeah like what the fuck is windsor style pizza <laughs> like, and i want that like, that's actually been there for a it? while like, there was one there before like a long time ago if i'm not mistaken <laughs> yeah i don't know windsor style pizza it's like you get you get windsor style pizza and you get uh you know like nova scotia style um <laughs> like this lobster uh, no no it's it's not lobster it's the thing it's like a middle eastern thing i forget what it is oh. but 
Uh, anyway, it's like, yeah, some weird, weird regional things. Ray but, over hey, there. that's what makes Canada cool. Ray says Peary over there. He's like, Peary. I'm like, yes, I don't, I, no one knows why Pierre Street is Peary. I have no idea why that is. Uh, Ray also said we're, we're gonna, we should talk to Kenny, Kenny McLeod over there at uh, Backstage and have him do a Bomber Palooza. Bomber Palooza. Uh, we'll do a two night full of great bands when uh, everything opens up. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think, uh, I think Kenny's going to have a big, a big bomber palooza type bash as soon as he can. Absolutely. Yeah. He's, uh, he, he's, he's one of those guys, you know, like, as I said, we've, we've played the backstage a number of times mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and he's, he's been very, very good to us. Yeah. He's a great guy for sure. That's a great yeah. venue. Bryn as well. Um, you know, a great sound guy, a great, great, Fantastic. Guy. him and his wife are just both two awesome people. Um, yep. you know, so I shout out to my buddy Bryn over there. Uh, right. And, Ann, Ann, of course is his wife. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. They, uh, I mean, I remember those two from even way back before backstage days. They, he was actually at, uh, Casa's years ago. He was the okay. house tech down there a long time ago. So. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that's, I mean, we've known him for years. So Bryn, yes, shout out to you guys at the backstage in Windsor, great club in Windsor. Let's hope all these great clubs can get back up and rocking soon, man. Oh man. And it's, and it's a bit different, uh, you know, from, from one side of the border to the next, um, you know, I see, uh, being from Canada, uh, originally I see a lot of my Canadian friends commenting on how things are over there and how the limitations, like you guys in, in Canada and Ontario, at least right now, you guys are kind of restricted, right? Like to your own home household and uh, you, I mean, you know, better than me, what's, what's the restrictions right now? So, uh, right now we're, we're in what I think are sort of the, the dying days of, of a lockdown that's been in place since boxing day. So, uh, December 26th. Um, and I mean, but it's, it's, you know, all the stores are, can be open for curbside pickup. Um, you know, you can, you can go to your dentist and stuff. Uh, the only thing you really can't do is go into a store unless it's a grocery store or a, a pharmacy. Um, and you can't get a haircut. And what about like, um, so that's <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing a hat. This fucking mom. I mean, it's a good problem for a man of my age to have, uh, but, <laughs> right. uh, but honestly, aren't you in your twenties? Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Barb says it's, we're in prison. She says basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I so I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into the politics of no. it. I, 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 I don't have a concern with with what with what being done. I know why it's being done. It's frustrating as hell, and nobody likes it. But I get it. And yeah. uh, so anyway, I think we're. I think they're about to lift sort of the latest round in most places. Um, you know, Windsor, Essex will be one of those places. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto will be will be last to get restrictions lifted. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as as they say, it is what it is, right? Tom says Afro stew. That's a little compressed right now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it is, uh, it is a little bit different um, over here in the United States, you know, basically, yeah. uh, you know, restaurants, you can, they just actually, I want to say it was this week. They just opened up to where, you know, you can actually dine in at a restaurant now. Um, and they have limited capacity. I want to say it's 25% capacity. And of course, their their hours are limited. You know, they can only stay open until 10 p.m. And, um, right. you know, certain restrictions like that. But, um, yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it. Um, you know, there seems to be a big difference in the numbers, you know, from, from one side to the other. Um, but on the other hand, you know, there's a lot more people and there's a lot of other things, other factors. So, um, yeah, definitely not talking <laughs> politics in any way, shape, or form because I'm not no. interested in that either. But, yeah, no. um, you know, it, it, well, I mean, the, the thing that is relevant for our conversation is that you know the last thing that's going to come back uh, will be large events, right? Yeah. Sports and concerts are the last thing that's going to come back, and uh, you know, presumably there'll be some bar. Like we we did have a period in time over the summer where you could go to a bar to see a band, provided you know you were spaced out and that the band had a shield up. And there were some other restrictions. I mean, it kind of took away from the experience and it didn't, no right. one really enjoyed that. Right. But yeah, I mean, concerts and, and sports, that's the last thing that's going to come back. Big crowd gatherings. For sure. I mean, I'm thankful that we've, we've had the opportunity in our lifetimes to experience as much of that as we have, because if it doesn't come back the way, you know, the way it always has been, it's going to be a, you know, a sad day for a lot of people. I think that, will, yeah. you know, you don't know what It'll you're be missing, back. but yeah, I, I think back. so too. <laughs> I think it will be, it's too much. There's too much, uh, you know, riding on it to, 
you know, like you can't just throw away an entire uh, art, basically, you know. Yeah. So even though we all are as bands and musicians and artists, we are finding ways this this show included is, you know, we're finding ways of, you know, sort of staying relevant and still keeping out there and doing as much as we can. It's a struggle and it's a whole different time and it's a different animal. But um, there are ways and there are things that you still can do even through this to keep moving forward and in hopes that, you know, sooner or later, all this thing is going to open up for us all, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, I mean, we adapt, right? Like, uh, and, and, you know, I think it's a good segue to, to the, the video, the last video you have yeah. of ours is, um, one that we did like other bands have done, you know, we, um, we thought, no, oh, you know, geez, we're not doing much else in terms of band. Let's let's do one of these recorded in isolation videos. And um, the song we chose uh, is called "Not the Way It Should Be," and <clears throat> you know, thematically, it it seemed to fit. You know, uh, things were are, are not the way they should be, or the way that we want them to be. Um, this is actually an older song that was written with with our original singer. Um, it's uh, it was the third real video that crawl did uh, again after i left the band but mm -hmm. um I, it was written while i was in the band and um it's always been one of my favorite crawl songs um but it, very different vibe from from the other two songs you just played we sort of have three areas of of tempo you know we have the the real upbeat rockers we have the sort of the the groove heavy ones and then we have the real kind of like you know th this song is in six eight time you know like there's a lot there you know it's just one of those kind of like anthemic kind of like right. flowing songs so right. that's kind of the three right. areas that we touch on yeah, that's good that's all good stuff yeah. right there <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah so that was a lot of fun to make this video you know we all we all sort of did our own parts and uh um i i tried my hand at video editing i mean i, I that rise video i had sort of put together so i mean i, I know how to do these things mm -hmm. but i've never done sort of the four quadrants uh it's it's a bit kind of rudimentary and basic but uh but it, you know it works um it sounds pretty good you know tom's drums are re literally recorded on an iphone right, um right, so right. i i just spend a bit of time doing some eqing and, and things like that and then once we had those you know scott and i were able to do our parts and mike did his part um and uh yeah it all came together pretty well i'm i'm, I'm actually kind of happy with the way it turned out yeah given sure. what it is well and you know and, and speaking as a drummer one of the most difficult things to do is to try to capture uh you know a, a, a studio quality drum sound in your in your house you know when you're in quarantine <laughs> yeah know, well and tom tom to his credit didn't even try he he literally had our buddy pete hold an iphone and he just started playing and he he's playing along to the cd version of the song oh yeah uh so he's not even playing to a click track right um so uh unfortunately the beginning of this song there there's nothing but guitar so i had to go in and i had i'm just like bragging now i had to go in and figure out the tempo that he was playing it at put a click track in at the beginning so that I could play the guitar intro sure. leading into when the drums come in. It was, it was, but again, what else was I doing? It's not like I was going, you know, out for dinner that night or anything else. I had no plans. Right. So right. why not? Well, and, it, and it's good. Like it's, it's good experience for you too. And, and as a band and for all you guys to be doing that at home working on, like in, in our case with, with uh, we're working on our fourth record right now. And, and literally uh -huh. like vocals, guitars, keyboards, everyone is doing their tracking at home with the exception of me. I'm the only one that's like in here tracking, working in here on, you know, on a regular basis. But other than that, yeah, everybody's doing all the tracking for the record at home. And it's like, holy right. cow, it's amazing, you know, what you can do now with that, you know? Well, it, and in fact, I think, you know, uh, in, in terms of what whatever we do next recording wise, uh, I suspect that, you know, it will be a lot of that. Um, I know that I've, I, you know, I'm at the point now where I've got, uh, I've, I've got a high end, uh, Helix setup for, yeah, for guitar. That's what we have um, as well. Yeah. Same I, thing. I could, I could record all my guitar parts direct. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I could, uh, I could do, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Scott can record his parts at home. He uses pro tools at home. Um, so it'd really be just a matter of going into a studio, getting the drums down and probably going back in the studio to get the vocals down because you want the vocals to be nice. And, um, although Mike did a great job with, with this, not the way it should be video, uh, you know, it's not studio quality per se, but it's pretty good, but, right. but we, we, and then we'd still need someone to mix it down, but I think we'll be doing, you know, we'll just get some beds down and then do some home overdubs for sure. Yeah. It's, it's the technology nowadays has kind of made things a little bit you know, a little bit easier for us to do it, even though we still have a learning curve with it all, you know, as you were yeah. experiencing with the video editing and all that type of thing. But right. the yeah. fact that, that, you know, it can basically be done, 
you know, fairly easily with some software, you know, that has been designed to make it a little bit easier, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and this video is a good example of, you know, your first attempt at a quarantine video, all you guys at different locations. And it's not it's not an easy thing to do. And you guys pulled it off very well. So and this and this yeah. is an older song, you said. Um, yeah. Not the way it should be. We're calling this what the isolation version? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is this is the one that we did. This was originally on our uh, a demo that we recorded in 1994, just before uh, I had left the band. Um, but it was uh, it was a song. As I say, it's just one of those songs. I really I really like it. I just I like the flow of it. I like the vibe. Cool. Do you guys have any plans like for more of this kind of thing, like in the near future, to maybe do another song, even if it's not a brand new song, but a you know of your a video like this for you know something that you've already recorded. Um, yeah, we've sort of talked about that. My my preference would actually be to to record a song that we haven't already done, but uh, that presents its own challenges just in terms of you know getting on the same page. And sure. um, we we've always been a, um, a a live off the floor kind of band. So um, when we were recording our first couple of CDs and EPs, um, and well, and, and even those most recent ones, we we do the beds almost always end up being the final product. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we just go in and do some fixing up and overdubs and stuff. But a lot of, we, we're, we're sort of big live off the floor kind of band. We just, we always just play better when we're together. Sure, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, let's check this video out here. This one is called Not The Way It Should Be. Uh, this is the isolation version of a song that uh, Crawl has recorded on our previous album. And this would be attempt number one for them out there. Their uh, isolation recording from yeah. home. Uh, awesome job, you guys. All right, check it out. Here it is. And bells, they to be revealed. 
Great song, not the way it should be. Nice job, you guys. Good job, Stuart. Thanks. That was great. Yeah, a lot of fun. Fun fact about that uh, that symbol with the hole that uh, the holes that Tommy's hitting. Mm -hmm. He uh, he entrusted me. <laughs> he entrusted me to buy him a symbol. He says, "I, I need a new symbol because uh, he, he, he this guy plays like uh, he is such a hard hitter when it comes to uh, playing drums. He goes through symbols like nobody's business." Anyway, so he he wants a symbol, and uh, he'd read about these these particular symbols, and he trusted me to go into Long and McQuaid and bash symbols and find the one that sounded best. And he was convinced that he was just going to chew through it because it had holes in it already. It was just going to fall apart. Right. It's probably the symbol he's like the longest serving symbol, <laughs> crash symbol that he's had. And uh, nice. yeah, it's uh, yeah. So, so you yeah. should go buy his symbols Sounds more good. often for him, actually. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, he hates when I talk drums, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but he can't. What can he say? I mean, he can't say anything. He chews through them like hey. water, and and you go pick up one symbol, and it's the one he still has. So he's never he's never forgiven me. So uh, and let's uh, not forget uh, that he's not here to defend himself either. Well, so. there's not to yeah. So <laughs> the song I mentioned earlier, "Dry," our first sort of you know radio song, um, that uh, that and the storm video both got nominated for Much Music Video Awards. By the way, I forgot to mention that nice. important fact. Um, so, uh, dry, when we were writing dry, I had in my head a, a drum intro. And, uh, so I would, I would tell him, I'd go, do, do, do. I would tell him how to play it. And he's like, uh, so I got behind the drum kit and I mean, I can, I can play drums. I'm not a drummer, but I, I can, I can play a beat. And so I get behind the drums and I play this intro. And so he's never forgiven me for that because I basically wrote a drum part and it's like, that's sacrilege. You know? <laughs> I mean, come on. Hasn't he like written any guitar parts before? Has he ever come to you and I, hey, dude, I got this idea for a melody? No, but he but he makes it a point that anytime you know I bring a riff in uh, and we're jamming on it, he makes a point to change it. Like it's there's got to be it's it's a rhythmic change. It's always a rhythmic change. Uh -huh. uh, but it's I'm convinced that he does this just because he uh, he's getting back at me for you know a drum intro that's you know 20 years old. I don't blame him, actually. Good job, Tom. <laughs> they, oh, yeah, the League of Drummers, they're dr <laughs> rallying around each other. <laughs> uh, that's funny. He's, uh, apparently, the whole holy symbol is cracked now. Oh, is it? That's, oh, that's wow. what he's telling us. Yeah, but, and not so but it many took, words. like, two years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's a family show, Tom. <laughs> well, great. All right. Well, that was a great tune. Good job on the uh, on the video, and, and you did most of the editing yourself, you said, huh? Yeah, yeah. I just pieced it together with everybody's contributions. Everybody did their bit. Yeah, it's nice great. Nice work. Nice job. Good stuff. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so why don't you tell me uh, anything that we need to know uh, that we're forgetting or that we're missing? I'd like to maybe uh, recap on your social links and how we can find yeah. crawl music and all that stuff. Why don't you tell us all about it? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we we have a website, crawl-music.com. Um, it's it's generally not the most up-to-date place to get information. I mean, a lot of bands, I think, have moved to, into the world of, um, you know, if you're selling music, you do it through Bandcamp. Uh, you know, if you want people to hear it, you put it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. So all of our all of our music's available on Apple. Um, if you search Crawl Rocks is, is our social handle. So, you know, we're at Crawl Rocks on Instagram and, uh, and, and all of the socials. Um, and it's probably the, cause there are a couple of other bands called crawl, including one who amusingly from BC, who tried to get us to cease and desist, uh, who formed after us. So I oh. wrote them a polite letter back and I said, here's some information from 1992 right. <laughs> that you guys may not have been aware of. So they backed off very quickly. Right, right. Um, so I actually, yeah, so crawl, crawl rocks. I actually have crawl rocks.com, but is that not your website? Yes. Oh, okay, you said there, I thought you said crawl so dash music. There's crawl. There is yeah. So sorry that, that there's probably crawl dash music was the original one. That was one that Scott set up years ago. I see. Um, and uh, but crawlrocks.com is also yeah. So crawlrocks.com is our website. But as I say, you know, on Facebook, uh, crawl rocks or uh, Instagram, uh, you know, just all over the internet, we are crawl rocks. Right, right. At crawl yeah, rocks. I wanted to make sure we get that right because I did have that up there and. Uh... The one that you mentioned was different, so I want to make sure we have the right one up for people to be able to yeah. find you guys. So, 
I don't know. They change these things and no one tells me. So. Well, you know, you're the guitar player. What do you need to know? I'm just right? the guitar. All right. I'm just a guitar player. <laughs> all you need to know is Tom's going to change your riff. That's all you need to know. Yeah. All I need to know is how to write drum intros. <laughs> That's all you need to know. You can get by in the band as long as you know how to write drum intros. Exactly. Sounds fair, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm I make not it, the I make it. I make a great, uh, I make a great guitar player for a drummer. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Well, thank you so much, Stuart. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Absolutely. Uh, I want you My guys pleasure. to, I wish you guys all the best of luck. And hopefully uh, when things get back ro rolling again, we can uh, get on and share a stage together and maybe get uh, our buddy Ray Solomon from Age of Wolves on the bill. And we can get, uh, my buddy JT from Abandoned Souls and we'll have a good time in Windsor. Hopefully we can make that happen soon. Huh? Yeah, that would be that would be great. Love to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Windsor, London. Let's let's do a bunch of shows. Yeah, that's great, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh Sandra yeah. over there on Facebook, she said that was a great song. Thanks for checking in, Sandra. Oh. I always appreciate you Thank being you. here. Uh she's another uh faithful supporter from uh from the Windsor area. So Perfect. tunes into the show and I appreciate it very much. So thank you everybody for being here. Um, and Stuart, thank you so much again. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. I look forward to more crawl music as you guys can get to it. Uh, and in the meantime, best of luck to you. Stay safe out there. And I hope, uh, I hope we can do this again sometime soon. It was a lot of fun. Love to have you back on the show again sometime. I thank you so much for having me and, uh, and for letting us, uh, spread the, the word of crawl. And next time you can interview Tom. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But thank you. That. Seriously, thank you. Thank you for having us. It was great. My was pleasure. Fun. My pleasure. I'm sorry we couldn't get Tom on the show. Actually, it would have been great to I'm not. to try, but it's probably for the best for everyone. So it's for, it's definitely for the best. He doesn't deserve it. <laughs> thank you, Stuart. Thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, I'll take care. All right. Well, Stuart Green from the band Crawl. Be sure to check those guys out. Great band from, I guess we'll call it from Ontario. I'm not sure if they're technically from the Windsor area or if they're from the Toronto area. We'll, maybe Tom will enlighten me in the chat. Tom, can you enlighten me in the chat? And then, then thank you, everyone, for being here again. I hope you had a good time with the show tonight. I appreciate all that you guys do. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you jumping in in the chat. I actually installed a new... Where is it? Right there. I put a little chat box in there so that we can see you guys chatting on all three platforms that I'm streaming to. So it makes it a little bit more fun for everybody. And I really do appreciate you guys for being here, for liking my Facebook page and my subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, and also finding me on Twitch.tv, Darren Curtis Drums on Twitch. Um, so thank you so much for your donations and for uh, all of your, for your time and for being here. And I hope you have as much fun as I do on the show. Um, be sure to find uh, Elsie Binks out there, uh, elsiebinks.com. Of course, all of my bandmates are streaming regularly on uh, Twitch. <laughs> There's Tom. Uh, thank you, Sandra. I appreciate it very much. Uh, let's talk about who's on the show next week. Don't forget. Check it out. Bourbon House. everybody looking forward to seeing you next week on bands across the water me and this little guy down here in the corner Lacey and jason next week sunday at seven bands across the water peace much love to you all have a great week Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no!
Oh, no. Oh, yeah.